And finally, fans of the 1988 cult classic Beetlejuice are set to flock to cinemas across Kent as the mischievous character returns 36 years after its first release. Joining me now to tell us more ahead of the brand new episode of Kent Film Club is the show's presenter, Chris DC. Chris, great to have you here. Thanks, Mahima. So, Chris, Tim Burton films, they're always a hit, but I mean, this one, it's, this one in particular, it's a 1988 classic. It's a horror and a comedy all in one. But before we get into it, can we talk about the genre? How can it be a horror, horror and a comedy in one? Well, when this came out, uh, people didn't know what to make of it because it's a real sort of hybrid. Uh, I always remember the, the Harry Belafonte song at the beginning, and it's sort of like a haunted house film with touches of looking at the afterlife, so lots of life after death themes, and all these scares. And, and Tim Burton's managed to get the cast back for, you know, Tim, uh, I think actually it's Michael Keaton's birthday today, and, uh, and Winona Ryder as well. So uh, this is before we made Batman and before Edward Scissorhands. And so, of course, I imagine fans are going to be running to the cinemas, ready to get their tickets. Now, what about yourself? Are you a fan of Beetlejuice yourself? Will well, you be I, I am. I remember when it came out, people said, if you like The Witches of Eastwick, which came out the year earlier, which is one of my favourite films, so if ever, if ever I'm a guest on my own programme, I might pick that one. But Beetlejuice, it's in that same sort of genre. And I did a lot of work on Afterlife films a few years later. So I, so I need no excuse to go and revisit this film, as I will in the next, well, it's released tomorrow, so I'll be watching it very soon. So you'll be watching it tomorrow. Now, I haven't actually watched the 1988 one and that's only because I didn't grow up with it being on my screen so but now with the likes of Jenna Ortega young stars coming up and, and going into the movie I'm thinking of going so I guess my question to you is what do you think this new these new viewers are going to look like do you think there'll be a difference in who actually goes to watch these films well because you've got the the children of the children I guess because we don't Ryder was only a teenager when this came out and so uh, you'll see the same characters but playing roles obviously a generation apart and this film is very sort of based on generations this young family move in and they upset the ghost so I can't wait to see what Tim Burton who's a very imaginative filmmaker is going to do with that but also as you say a new cast and a cast of much a much younger generation so I think it's it'll really work for the for those who grew up like me in the 80s and also those uh, who will be watching this afresh. Now, like you mentioned, it will be a blast to watch, but now it's not the first time we've seen a film being rebooted. For example, Ghostbusters, there's loads of them. There's one where it's even got a whole female cast. So it's not a new thing, but what about yourself, Chris? Have you ever thought about a movie that you think needs to come back again? What, what film would you want to see? Well, well I know there are some that they should never make, and they did try like It's a Wonderful Life, but um, Mrs. Doubtfire, when Robin Williams was alive, he was always asked that question, will you redo Mrs. Doubtfire? And of course, sometimes you don't want to tread on an original and make it look a little less impressive. Um, but, I mean, personally, I mean, John Updike, who wrote The Witches of Eastwick, uh, the novel on which the film was based, also made, uh, some years later, he wrote The Widows of Eastwick. So, you know, th there is scope. Uh, a good, Ghostbusters is a good example because they redid it, often with some of the cast, but with a completely new generation of actors, uh, so similar to Beetlejuice. And, of course, it says, I dare you to say it a third <laughs> time. So um, I I'm not going to say it three times because anything could happen. Uh, uh, it's live TV. But, yes, um, I'm sure there will be a third in the offing at some point. I definitely wouldn't dare say it a third time either but really quickly what's coming up on Kent Film Club tonight? So we have uh, Alex Marsh who's a local filmmaker based in Dover and he's uh, well two of his films have got star at the beginning one Stargate one is Star Trek uh, and also Twisters which uh, which is a film that was which I saw at the cinema only two months ago. Sounds very exciting Chris well thank you for joining us.